What's up everybody? I'm Matt. And I'm Beth. And today we're going to be reviewing the interior in the 2023 Hyundai Palisade. And this is the fully loaded calligraphy trim. So this is the nicest Palisade you can get. It's about $52,000 as tested. And uh, it's really nice. They made some really nice improvements to the Palisade for 2023. And the Palisade and the Telluride both were really top of its class. And this basically just makes that lead even further. And it's really impressive with all the nice improvements they've done here for this year. But there is one glaring omission still as well, which we'll get into. But um, overall, I mean, it's a really cool thing. They redid the dashboard here. There's some new technology, the way they restyled everything um, in smaller ways. It looks, you know, fairly similar to the old Palisade, but a lot of new changes here. And uh, I think it looks, looks really nice and luxurious here for this calligraphy version, especially. Yeah, there are some really nice materials. There's also some iffy materials, but I think overall it looks really nice and cohesive. I like it a lot. So first thing, sitting down in these seats, these are brand new seats here in the Palisade and here in the calligraphy version they're even one step further than when you get in other versions of the Palisade. So um, first off they're Napa leather here in this top trim. They're heated and cooled and they're great with all of that and I also have to add that the cooled seats are some of the best cooled seats out there. They actually get you cold. They're cooled seats. They're not ventilated. They don't just like whisper some airflow through the seat. Like it actually gets freezing cold to the point that you have to turn it off after a few minutes, which is good. A lot of them don't do that much cooling and this is great. But also there are now ergo motion seats here. And so what that means is you have a massage function here and it's a pretty basic massage. You know, there aren't a ton of programs. It basically just does either your back, your bottom or both. And, uh, but the cool thing is that it's intelligent and it'll automatically turn on that massage after about an hour of driving to help alleviate lower back pain and just reduce fatigue overall. And it's really cool. We actually did a longer drive where I was driving for about an hour on the highway and um, it was it started kicking on automatically and it was a really nice little uh, you know improvement and so a very interesting addition here and I uh, just really love these seats it just makes the comfort you know top notch again they're already basically some of the most comfortable seats in this segment and now they just again are probably the best seats in the segment hands down and with a passenger unfortunately you do not get those massage seats however you do have everything else you have the power adjustments you can go up and down back and forth and you do have the nice power lumbar that's good it would be nice though, to have a massage there on the passenger you know since it's the same basic seat otherwise up front here you know but yeah i do like the pattern on them here too i think it's kind of cool it's you know a little bit out of the ordinary and gives you some extra visual interest um but then moving on to the steering wheel that is also all new here in the palisade and it's a really great wheel it's similar to what you see in like the new sonata and stuff like that as well has a great nine and three grip nice actually big ten and two notches for through or crossover you even have paddle shifters which are pretty big and i think it's kind of silly honestly for a vehicle like this how many people use the paddle shifters in a palisade um anyway you know just a, a really nice wheel though otherwise i love the metal buttons and the metal trim here it all feels pretty high-end considering most other competitors in this segment don't use very much metal if any at all and so I mean this definitely feels a little more expensive than most of the others with just how much metal or even metal plated plastic you have in here it just is a very nice touch but a great steering wheel uh, it is also a heated steering wheel of course here in the upper trims the gauge cluster here is a 12.3 inch gauge cluster and that isn't anything new the Palisades have had those for the ever since they came out a couple of years ago but the new thing is that now it's been brought down to some of the lower trims so an SEL premium now also gets these digital gauges instead of just being the limited and those upper two trims there where you get those gauges in the past. So great that you have them and uh, they have all kinds of cool toys like the blind view monitor whenever you put your turn signal on that shows you what's going on in your blind spot there in the gauge cluster. And also in these upper trims you get a head-up display as well but coming over to this uh, touchscreen you have this 12.3 inch touchscreen display and that is now standard for 2023 in the Palisade which is notable to not only just have a touchscreen as standard but one this big is you know really impressive. The previous touchscreen screen was I think an eight inch screen is standard now you all get the uh, large screen here and it works really well with one exception and that is that it doesn't have wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto and this is you know a couple of years back not everyone had that that was more of a rare thing so it wasn't a big deal uh, but nowadays you know especially some of the newest competitors coming out have wireless smartphone integration and you know with everything else they changed in this interior in 2023 why they didn't add wireless smartphone integration is a real big head scratcher and uh, this is a problem that hyundai kia and genesis for some reason they can't figure out how to get wireless smartphone integration in any of their uh, larger screens like this and so that's just one key thing where you know you have to do one extra step here versus the competitors you hop in you have your smartphone right on the screen with this you have to pull your phone out plug it in and then you have smartphone integration it's a first world problem i know but it's just one of those convenience things that just saves you five or ten seconds and 
it's just you know something that's nice to have in the others and that's really the one very minor but you know one of the big glaring downfalls of this interior i mean especially if you're a busy parent with this car being so family oriented with it being large and easily carrying lots of kids if you have a ton of kids and you're trying to get in the car you're trying to run off to wherever you need to go Honestly, it's gonna be that much easier to have wireless Apple CarPlay than to just, you know, have to plug your phone in. It's just one extra thing, like you said, but it's just too much sometimes. Yeah, and uh, so, I mean, supposedly there's aftermarket workarounds to get that functionality, so if you absolutely love the Palisade and the Telluride and you must have that integration, there might be a way to do it. Um, you know, it just wouldn't be from Hyundai, but uh, it's funny though, because even like the wireless charging mat here, uh, they actually increased the speed, they tripled the speed of the wireless charging mat, but you know, if you're wanting smartphone integration, you're gonna have to plug your phone in anyway, and it'll be charging with that no matter what. So it's you know, it's nice there's a faster wireless charging pad, but I feel like that's almost you know something that isn't even important because you'll probably always have to have your phone plugged in if you want to actually have that functionality. That does obviously have Bluetooth, audio streaming, and all that kind of stuff. You can still do if you don't want to plug your phone in. And uh, I really like how the Bluetooth audio streaming also shows you like your playlist and stuff on the screen here. And uh, you know, it's really well done for the Bluetooth audio streaming, but still just not as good as having actual you know smartphone integration. There. There. Um, but otherwise, you know, it has all the other uh, cool touches they introduced back when the Palisade was introduced originally with the passenger talk, the quiet mode, all those family friendly features there. And also, now another family friendly thing is that you now have Wi Fi as standard here built into the Palisades as well. Of course, you have to you know, have a subscription for that, but it's cool you have built in you know, uh, modems here so you can have everyone's devices connected, you know, even if they're not cellular, you have it through the car here. So it's cool you have that too. There's also a pretty good Harman Kardon stereo system hooked up to this screen as well. And uh, I was actually pretty impressed with the sound quality. It's certainly better than some of the past uh, upper Hyundai systems in the past. And um, have the nice metal speaker grills here too, which give you a nice, uh, more luxurious look to them. But it is a really good sounding stereo, so I was pretty impressed with that. Anyway, moving on, you know, beneath the screen here, you also have some buttons here and volume and tune knobs. It's great you still have both of those. Um, they are plasticky. They're not quite as nice as some of the other stuff in here. But you also have this little uh, touchscreen here for your uh, climate controls, which is nice and simple in the way that it works. So it's not too complicated. It is, you know, a little bit more high tech than what you had in the, uh, you know, pre-refresh Palisade. And you also have, you know, several other buttons here for all the other basic functions you want to use and also your drive mode selector. And again, more metal here around your shifter, which is just the buttons here. It nicely kind of cleans this area up so you don't have a bulky shifter like you get in the Telluride, for example. And so it's nice that you have, you know, a nice airy uh, cabin here with those push buttons. And I will say right there, this material is really cool I love it it is plastic however it is not piano black plastic so anything that you know could scratch up against here you'll see it way less than you would see in a lot of the other competitors that just have piano black plastic here now there is piano black plastic on the dash and on the doors here but it also has these stripes in it lessening once again the view of any kind of scratches that you'll get there yeah, so I think between those two, they really did a good job of kind of minimizing some of that, you know, wear and those common complaints with everyone else in this industry going with Panda Black everything. It's respectable that Hyundai kind of, you know, pushed back on that a little bit and, you know, minimized the Piano Black. Yeah, and I mean, they do have it right in, on the dashboard too, where the screen is and everything like that, but those are less touch points than your normal everyday touch points here so I don't think it's as bad and then moving on to the uh, store spaces here in the uh, Palisade they always do a great job and that's basically the same thing here for these new ones so you have a nice large pocket in the doors of the bottle holder you have this nice little cubby underneath the uh, shifter in the center console area you also have this nicely covered little center bin here and that's where you'll see that wireless charging pad as well as these uh, cool uh, cup holders I love they did these with a pre refresh Palisade as well but you know, these like removable kind of cup holders that kind of spring out and they work great and allow you to have a lot of flexibility in that space as well as that yeah last charging pad and a little bit of extra space there you also have the center armrest which does have a little bit of padding to it and you know it feels pretty nice and you open that up and you'll see uh two more uh you know, power outlet and a usb jack and also this little removable tray and also one other important switch here for 2023 is that except for this one uh, usb jack here by the wireless uh, charging pad that's the one that controls the smartphone integration but all the other uh usb jacks in this vehicle that are used for 
we're charging our USB-C now, not USB-A. So you're gonna have to make sure that you have USB-C cables and the newest, uh, you know, hookups and stuff. It's not going to be able to use the USB-A anymore. And that even goes for like these little USB jacks and the seats here, all those things, they switch all of them over to USB-C. So just uh, be mindful of that, you know, for your accessories. And one last little cool piece of tech up front here is that you do have a uh, camera rear view mirror now, which is very handy. Uh, if you have a bunch of, you know, stuff or people in the back seat there, it's nice. You have a very clear view all the time with that camera rear view mirror. But moving on to the back seat here in the Palisade, there's some nice improvements there as well. So first off, those second row seats do have side impact airbags now, which is great. So from a safety standpoint, a little bit safer now, in addition to having the side curtain airbags you had previously as well, you still have those too. Um, but otherwise, you know, those seats there in the middle, those have adjustable angles for those armrests now. That's the new addition there, but they're still the same great seats that are heated and cooled, which is still kind of rare in the segment to have cooled second row seats. You have that there. You also have, you know, their own climate controls, air vents there. Um, and it's great you have them in the roof as well, so you have some better airflow there. But because you have those air vents in the roof, it means you do sacrifice on the panoramic roof here, because instead you kind of have a double moonroof set up with, you know, a normal small moonroof up front here and then a larger one in the back there, but you have a huge pillar there in the middle. So it's not quite as expansive of a view as some of the competitors, which might have, you know, more of a true, uh, you know, panoramic roof in them, but still really great second row seats. And these captain's chairs also have those adjustable headrests that can kind of uh, move in a little bit like airline headrests. And so helps you to, you know, keep your head in place a little bit if you're sleeping or whatever back there. And you'll see they also have, you know, the great storage spaces in that second row with, you know, double cup holders there in the tops of the doors, which are really handy, you know, for especially little kids and stuff in car seats. Also, you'll see that the, one of my favorite things about the Palisade, they copied it from Honda and the Honda Pilot, to be fair, but um, they have buttons there to sling forward that second row seat to get easy access to the third row. As long as your child is old enough to press a button, they can literally get that seat forward versus some of the others like the Toyota Highlander where you need to have a bunch of muscle and you lift a heavy lever in order to get the seats out of the way this is one of the best in its segment with just having a button it goes away and it's super easy to do whenever you do uh, go into that third row there you'll see it's a nice and spacious third row still one of the most spacious ones in this segment me being five foot nine sitting behind myself with that uh, second row seat either slid all the way forward or all the way back both cases, I still have sufficient legroom. Now, my knees are basically right up against the seat back there whenever the seat, the second row is pushed all the way back, but it's still doable for, you know, seven adults, which is impressive. And of course, if you go for lower trims of the Palisade, you can still get a bench seat here. If you want to actually seat eight, you can. Another cool thing is that the third row here in these top trims are heated. I believe this is the only one in this segment that offers that. And so, uh, you know, if you have uh, people in that third row consistently and they would appreciate heating, this will probably take the cake for them as far as being the best choice and also you'll see there's more of those USB-C jacks back there and cup holders and even speakers right there so you have a really strong uh, powerful sound system even back there yeah, they have a great sound experience even in the third row and then you know moving on to the trunk you'll have a good amount of space for again this segment you know it's not enormous or anything you're gonna have to go up to a full-size you know truck based SUV if you want to have a bigger cargo space than that but um, still a good amount of space and I love how they have the removable floor there where you can have a ton of space underneath and that's a huge cubby you can fit like large duffel bags under that floor and then stack everything on top of that too so you know i'd say as far as that goes it's one of the better ones because there's some others where you have some stuff under the floor but not much this it's like that whole thing is wide open which is great and so i think hyundai just you know they with the policy when they originally introduced it a few years back they really thought through everything very well and really knocked it out of the park in basically every single way. And so with all those great improvements here, you know, we have to the Palisade for 2023. It just continues to, again, keep it top of its class in basically every way except that smartphone integration. That is the only thing keeping this from actually being perfect. Like if it had that, it would be totally perfect, like unbeatable in its segment. And um, again, I think you can do something aftermarket wise to fix that one issue as well. But aside from that, like I said, it's it's really, really impressive. And that's why, I mean, at least in our neighborhood, I mean, multiple neighbors have Palisades. They're everywhere around here. I mean, I can't drive more than five minutes without seeing, you know, multiple Palisades. It's like they're everywhere and for good reason. And, um, you know, I think they have a great thing going here with the Palisade and the Telluride, which also does have a bunch of improvements uh, for 2023 as well. But these two are top of its class still in my opinion. And we'll see there's some new stuff coming, uh, you know, in 2023, there's the new Honda Pilot. We'll see what happens with that and some others, you know, that might be coming as well. But for now here in the fall of 2022, I really don't think you can do better than a Palisade. And also 52 grand, which is still cheaper than some of the others. 
and just an excellent value. It's great the price hasn't ballooned here, even with the crazy you know, popularity of these. Um, it's still a great value, and you just get so much vehicle for your money. So, yeah, I think it's going to be tough to do better than a Palisade or a Telluride, honestly. Definitely. But anyway, that's all of our thoughts on the Palisade interior. Let us know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Huge thanks to Hyundai for providing us here with this Palisade to review for you guys today. And yeah, thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Take, Take care. care.